rivets to any bag can be both decorative and functional. I've used them here to hold my tab together, but I also could add stitching or I could take these rivets and add them right along the top or along the bottom to make them decorative. What I love about them is that they do add some pretty bling, which I always like on my bags, but they also are functional in that they can hold it together and make it a lot stronger. So where do you get started with rivets? I know it can be a little bit overwhelming. What do you buy? What tools do you need? Where can you use them? So let's take a look here. These are the rivets that I sell on the website and we sell eight millimeter by eight millimeter rivets. What exactly does that mean? You might wanna know. Well, here are my two pieces. These are double cap rivets. So what a double cap rivet means is that you have a top right here. This is eight millimeters across and it means you also have a post just like this one right here your post piece will snap into the top piece. Because they are double cap, they look the same on both sides. So you can see on this bag, this is technically the front of my bag, but here's the back of that same piece and it looks exactly the same. So when you're purchasing rivets, you'll want to know what size you need for your project. You'll need to know how thick you'll want them to to know what they're going through and you'll need to know what size you want them to measure across. We chose the eight millimeter by eight millimeter because it seems to work really great with cotton and cork, and it's a good size even on a smaller handle. This is a one inch wide handle. I've also used these on half inch wide handles and they work just fine. I could put them next to each other, up and down. I can add them as decoration. I've had customers who've added them just along the seam here or even along the top just for decoration. You can add them all along the handle. Rivets are a really great way to express your own style. So let's go over some of the tools that you'll need to install your rivets. I've zoomed in a little bit so we can take a look at the rivet itself. So again, here is my top. This is the shorter part that has just a little opening. And then this is the post. That is going to click into that piece. And it sounds like when it's clicking in that it's actually holding it, but you will need some kind of a setting tool, either a press or a hand tool, so that this post actually flattens into this piece and holds it together. These are double cap, so they look the same on both sides. And all we need to install those is some kind of a press, which I'll show you. You'll also want something that you can make your holes with. You could easily do them with a seam ripper or scissors, but I prefer using this ProMaster leather punch tool. This wheel right here can turn and I can get various size holes. Of course, because I only use one size rivet, I tend to use the same size hole, but it can be used for other projects as well. And I also keep with me this little awl. So this is pointed, kind of sharp on this end, but this is gonna help me if the hole does not punch all the way through so that I can make sure and get any of the little bits and pieces of cork or leather or fabric out of my way so that my rivet will sit nicely inside of it. You might also wanna grab a marking tool, but if I'm being perfectly honest, when I put in rivets, I just kind of wing it. It's not always the best method, but it's what I do. So let's also take a look at the tool that I use to install my rivets. I do not use a hand setting tool. You can find those very simply and they're pretty inexpensive, usually in the 10 to $12 range, but I prefer to do it with a um, setting press like this. The reason is I get much better and more um, accurate uh, rivets. When I'm using a hand setting tool, I find that I'm always a little bit off. My rivets sometimes will be, be a little bit crooked. The post doesn't always want to sit straight. This is a little bit more on the expensive side for rivets, but if you are intending on doing them more than just one time, I would say that this is something you might want to look into. I have the Gold Star. That's where I purchased mine from and some of the um, setting dies, which I have as well. You can also use this not only for rivets, but you can order grommet dies, you can order um, snaps, pearl snaps. There's a lot of different pieces that once you have this base unit that you can attach, and the pieces attach right here. I'll show you how that works. There's a handle here. It does not come on. You just have to screw it on when it comes in, but it's pretty simple to do. This piece is pretty heavy, and it also has uh, some holes down here, you can see right there, where you can drill this into a table if you have a permanent setup. I tend to work in a few different areas, so I have mine just free so I can move it around. There's also um, Camset, I believe is another uh, company, and there's a lot of other companies that you'll find online if you do some Googling. I liked this one, this is from Gold Star, and that's what I ordered. I also like purple, if you can't tell, so I ordered it in the purple. It comes in about four or five different colors. I believe for this by itself, I paid in the $70 to $80 range, but then you're also going to need some of your dye 
uh, little um, sets here. And these can be a little bit on the pricey side, anywhere from $20 to $40. I don't remember exactly how much this one was, but I want to say it was about $29 to $30. And this is made specifically for, um, excuse me, for rivets and the rivets that I have, which are eight millimeter. Again, the millimeter is measured this way and it's also measuring the post. But this opening right here, this is where the rivet will sit and it's also going to sit on this part and that's going to make sure that my post does not get crooked on me. So what do I do with these two pieces? Well, this right here, which has a little spring in it, this is going to go on the bottom. And so this just sits in here like that. It doesn't need to be um, hooked in. It doesn't, it just kind of pops in and out. This piece right here that has the screw on the end, this you're going to want to twist up here. And one thing that I learned the hard way when I was trying to do this on my own without looking is don't over tighten. You don't want this hanging down and wobbly. That's going to make your rivets not set very well, but you don't want to turn this until you're really, really tightening it because what happens is each time you use this press, it's pressing in a little bit more and it makes it super, super hard to get out. So what I do is I just tighten just until it stops turning and that's it. I can still very easily turn this out. So I just give it a quick turn. As soon as I feel any resistance, I stop. And I usually put that piece in first and then this one, I can push that little spring down and pop that in place, just like so. So this moves, this does not. So when I stand this up, and I'm going to grab the handle, when I push that handle down after my rivet is in, this is what happens and it helps me to really set the rivets. Harder to do on the side, um, but just so you can see how that works. So I just press just like that. So how do I get my rivet set up before I use this tool? Let's go ahead and prep some. So what I'm gonna do for the demo is I'm just going to add some swivel hooks onto the um, each end of this handle. I've gone ahead and I've already prepped it. This is cork. I've just folded it in half and done my top stitching. My open side is right here. My closed side is right here. I haven't finished this edge um, with edge coach or fabric fusion, but I could. And if I was going to, I would do that now. That way it was fully prepared. I've grabbed a couple of swivel hooks. I have some rivets here. I have my uh, punch right here, as well as my awl. Now, again, I would suggest that you go ahead and measure and come up with a plan before you just start putting holes in things. But for demo purposes, I'm just going to kind of wing it here to show you how it looks. So I'm just going to take my swivel, add that on and fold this piece in half just like this. And sometimes if you need to, you can add like a binding clip right here to hold it down. Um, again, I'm just kind of doing this to show you how it looks. I want to add two rivets, so I want to give myself enough room. So I'm pulling that down, let's see, about an inch and a half. And I'm just going to do that right there. And what I'm going to do is take my punch now and I'm going to make the hole and I'm going to make it through both sides. That way I know that this is the length that I want it, that this is in place where I want it. And I'm just going to put my holes right here, one on top of another. So when it comes to using the leather punch that I have here, I purchased this on Amazon. I think it was under $20. It's been well worth the money. This little thing right here, you can see there's a um, an arrow on the wheel. This just turns. It it's not super easy to turn. You have to kind of pull it and I'm not going to snap that um, back just because this is actually the one that I want, but you just can turn this into whatever direction you need to get the, um, the hole that size that you want. I've done some experimenting and I know that this is the whole size that I want. The way that I know that is because when I have tried it, if I go with too large of a hole, I risk the chance that the rivet can pop through. I wanna go slightly smaller, just big enough that this post will slide in. And so there's a little plate right here and that's where I'm going to punch. So it makes it really easy to make a hole. Again, if you want to use scissors and seam rippers, you can do that as well. You could do the entire thing with an awl, but I feel like if you're doing rivets and you're going to be investing in rivets, why not invest in an easy hand tool like this as well? So I just fold this down and I'm just going to kind of eyeball right up here where I want to put that hole. And I'm going to line this up. And before I do anything, I'm just kind of looking and that looks good to me. So just like that. I love that crunch. And I twist it around a little bit before I let it go. And then after I let it go, I can grab my awl and just poke any little pieces out. There's a little piece right there. I don't want that to get in the way of my rivet. So I'll just pop that out. And now I have a nice clean hole. 
I'm gonna do it one more time for my second rivet. So make sure that that hole is lined up. Uh, use a binding clip if you need to, or if you're using cotton, if you wanna pin it, that's absolutely fine. And I always do my markings or my punching on the backside because I wanna know where this ends. I don't wanna put a hole that's going to be right here that's not going to be as functional in catching it, plus I don't think it looks as nice. So I'm just kind of eyeballing and right there, I've got it. Give it a twist, let it go, and poke that hole with my awl. All right, so I'm all ready. Now I can go ahead and put my rivet in. So what I do is I grab the piece that has the post and just pop that right through there. It really doesn't matter what side because these are double cap rivets, so they look the same on either side. And so I'm gonna put this right here and I don't know if you heard that, but I heard a tiny little click, and that just means that it's in place. It's not pushed down. You can see that it's a little bit long here, but it's not super, super long. You wouldn't want a rivet that was out too far. This just has a little bit of wiggle room, so it's perfect um, for the size and the thickness of this cork. I'm just going to slide this over and grab my press. And here's my press. Now, this is gonna be a little bit awkward for you, but what I'm gonna do is show you on the side and then I'm gonna have to stand it up so I can use it. So what I do is take my piece here and I put it right in between. And if I need to, I can uh, use the spring and kind of pull that down. I want this piece to go right into the rubber part, just like that. And tip this up, get that right in there. That way it's nice and straight. And then when you push, you're gonna push twice. You kind of feel once where it feels like it's in, give it another push, and that's what's really going to sink it in. And just like that, I have my rivet right over here. And I can see from the side, it's not crooked, and that's because I have used this. I find that when I try to do this with a hand press, which I tried to do, or a hand tool many years ago, I was super frustrated and I thought that I just really wasn't good at rivets or that rivets weren't working for me. And the problem was not the rivets, the problem was the tool I was using. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this one as well. Put that on there, hear that little snap, which sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. There we go. And I'm gonna put that into my press line that up on both top and bottom hole press and press one more time and just like that and here's a lesson for you i'm a little bit crooked because i didn't do any measurements you're going to do better than i am and the front eh, i'm not too happy with that but it's okay it's just for demos so there's my two rivets nice and strong it's not coming out and i don't have to do any sewing so I can go ahead and do this on the other end with the other piece as well. And then I'm ready to add this to my bag. Now, if I wanted to, I could take the entire pack of rivets and I could add them along here and make it really fancy and decorative. It's your bag, so you can do anything you like. I hope that helped in how to put in rivets. They're actually not too bad if you have the right tools. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions. We do sell the hardware and rivets on the website. Again, the tool that I bought is from Gold Star Tools. I don't have any affiliation. It's just a tool that I liked. You can buy that right on their website. And this tool right here, as well as my all, were purchased on Amazon. Again, no affiliation, just giving you some information.